It is time to take a look at shooting in small spaces. Uh, I did a survey where I asked everyone kind of, what are some of the things that you want to know about studio lighting? And one of the main things was, well, how to make it work in a small space. Don't get me wrong, shooting in a big space is, is easier. I mean, there's more room to move around, more room to set up lights, but it doesn't mean you can't create beautiful images in a small space. So I actually have invited you into my home. This is my downstairs hallway and it is super small. So the entire space that we're going to be shooting in today from wall to wall is exactly six feet wide. From the furthest back, like the very farthest back I can step to the background is nine feet deep. And then the ceiling, the taller part of the ceiling is uh, just about eight foot. And then it actually gets a little shorter. So in other words, six, nine, eight feet. This is a nice small space but we're going to be able to make beautiful images. And so I'm gonna take you through some of the problem solving because you will encounter some issues. It's, it's not you, you're not doing anything wrong, but there are some special considerations. We're going to be looking at things like the size of your modifiers, the distance of your subject to the background. We're going to be looking at your focal length. All of those things affect how you shoot in a small space. And obviously, you know, this is a lighting course and we're talking about lighting but it's not standalone. These things all kind of work in conjunction. So I'm going to give you tips and tricks for all of them. Another question I get all the time is about mixing and matching different strobes. Can you mix speed lights? Can you mix strobes? Can you mix? Yeah, absolutely. You can totally mix and match things. It is not about the type of lights, but how you use it. Light is light. It's about how you modify it and how you understand it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use two speed lights and then I'm going to add in an expensive studio strobe but that studio strobe is actually gonna be kind of an extra. So even if you start with a couple inexpensive pieces of gear and then you add on and you get something else, you can use this entire kit together. So don't feel like you always have to start again from the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and I want uh, something a little bit more like how I usually shoot for my own beauty work. I want a harder light on her face. So it's a little more dramatic and focused. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light her face with a grid. I have a grid here and it's pointed at the center of her face. Again, downsides of using the speed light for this instance is because it's really hard to see. But if I hit my depth of field preview button, it flashes and so I can see where the light's hitting. So it works out. Let me take a shot of this, okay? And so I have this uh, actually set to manual this time because I'm using many lights together and so I'm gonna control each of them manually instead of using TTL. Let's see. All right. Oh. It's so pretty, okay. So uh, I've got that hard light grid on her face. And so the light you only see from the top of her head to just below uh, her neck. And so it's beautiful sculpted light. The problem is she's just kind of a floating head now, right? There's, there's no, no context, there's no separation. And so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add the background light. I wanna make sure she's not blending into the background. And so I've got a 20 degree grid. This is a wider grid. And so it'll give me a little bit more spread of light on the background. Now I have this set to an optical slave. Basically what it means is when this light fires, as soon as it sees a pulse, it will also fire. So it's not like I have a special trigger or anything. So it's, but these two things are not talking to each other. I cannot control the power of that strobe from this trigger. So I, I'm not really mixing and matching. I'm just setting it manually and then I can set them to whatever I need them to be. So in this case, because my speed lights are uh, less powerful, they have less power output, I'm starting with my 500 watt second strobe at its lowest power. Because I already know, even at its lowest power, it's got a lot of oomph to it, a lot of light. So let me take a test. Okay, good. And so perhaps at four, where I have it, it, it could use some more. Like I see a little bit of separation, but I want, I want to see more. So I'm gonna actually pump up this two stops. Okay, I'm gonna pull it back just a bit, sorry. And I'm gonna aim it a little bit higher. All right, so now let me test it. Two full stops brighter. Okay, so it is a lot brighter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually turn it down a half stop. It's just a little distracting. All right, so turned it down a half stop. Okay, so now I've got some separation behind her neck. Uh, if I wanna go higher up, I can change the angle of that grid to separate her hair. 
if I want more spread on the background, that's a 20, right? That's a 20, so that's the most spread I have. If I wanted to spread out more, I'd have to shift this whole set forward, but I only got nine feet. So I'm gonna keep it where it is. If I needed to, I could probably move one more foot before I was in too tight of a space. That's also why I'm using my zoom lens because I can vary the focal length uh, and change the zoom so I can get the framing that I want. All right, so let me take one more of those. All right, so that looks good. Uh, but now problem is this hair is gorgeous and it's being lost. I'm only seeing just a little bit in the front. I don't wanna lose the hair. And also I'm losing the detail of her chest and uh, her dress. I don't want that to disappear either. So this is where I would add a fill light. Because both of these lights are grids, the light isn't going to bounce anywhere. They're super focused. So even in a small space with all these white walls, the light didn't spread out enough to fill in the shadows. So actually I'm gonna to have to add a fill light. Even if I added a reflector, it wouldn't be enough. Not enough light bouncing around. So that's what my third light is, and I'm gonna add a speed light again. And so this speed light uh, is on a small umbrella, white umbrella with diffusion. And so the whole point of that is it's just going to give me soft light that bounces around. I could also use a shoot through umbrella. Uh, and I just wanna make sure I have some light to the shadows. I placed it on the right hand side so it would rake across her body a bit in the same direction as the main light so that it, it, it's more of a motivated lighting. So the, the shadows won't cross. Instead, the shadows will go the same direction. So you'll see this glow of light on the face and then the softer fill in the same direction. It tends to be more pleasing than having main light on one side and fill light from the other. It doesn't quite make as much sense. It'll be uh, more of an invisible fill light, less obvious. All right, so I'm gonna start with this at, let's see. I'm gonna start with it at a little less than half the power of the main light. It'll still definitely be noticeable, but it won't be overpowering that grid. We'll start there. And again, I set it to manual. So I really like it. Um, I think that maybe my fill light's a little bit bright, even at half the power, so one stop less, it's still quite noticeable. Uh, I might turn it down just a tiny bit, like a third of a stop. So I'm gonna change it right here for my trigger. Okay, third of a stop here. Okay, so I think it's a little bit more subtle. And in my opinion, it keeps the tension more where it should be on her face. I like that. Uh, I'm just gonna angle my grid now a little bit more to be behind her hair. And I think it's where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna angle this over and up. And I see a little bit of spill light on her arm. That's why it's really useful to have modeling lights because if there was spill light from a speed light, I wouldn't see it. So I'm just gonna angle that. I could also put uh, some foam core, some uh, V-flat I could put here, or I could put a piece of cinefoil. So that cinefoil would block off the light from spreading. All right, so let's try right there. All right, let's see. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Okay, so turn your shoulders a little further to the right. Good. And chin up to that and keep your eyes kind of right around here. Perfect. Um, I need you to pull your uh, hand back just a little bit and then let's put a hand up to your chest. Beautiful. And I'm shooting right now right around 60 millimeters and this is like a half inch outside of my frame. It's just about in my frame but I'm placing things very carefully. If I needed a wider shot, I would have to change it. I could mount it a different way, but this actually works great. Beautiful, okay, cool. And I'm gonna move in tighter. Can you pull your right arm back? Beautiful, and lean forward just a bit. And then look right at me, good. Let me see how that light looks, beautiful. And I think I'm gonna do one more with you uh, scoot back just a little bit. I'm gonna go for super long neck, so I'll just have you lean forward. But the whole time I know that a grid only gives me like this much area of light. So I gotta make sure her face lines up with that grid. Okay, that good. And chin towards me a little. Okay. I'm getting down a low angle because it's a very powerful angle. And I'll look chin harder back towards the light. And chin down just a little, and then eyes up. Good, beautiful. 
Perfect. I love it. So I'm, I'm absolutely mixing and matching. If I put uh, an Alien Bee or an inexpensive Studio Strobe in here, I could absolutely use that as well. I could use that instead of this second speed light. And that I could use instead to fill it in. So when you're shooting in the studio, don't think that you have to have all of the same brand, all of the same type of lights, or that you all have to, you have to set them from the same trigger. That's not true at all. You can set them all to be triggered and controlled manually from that light. And as long as you have something that talks to one of those lights to get it to fire, you can have all of the rest of them optically slave and fire. So don't feel like you need to buy one set of lights and that everything matches. Mix and match, build as you go, build up to the quality of lights you eventually wanted to have. But wherever you're starting, it can absolutely work together. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the background setup. There are so many different background setups that you can choose that are actually made specifically for small spaces. And so uh, there's ones that actually hang directly from the ceilings. You can get J-hooks that hang from the ceilings, or there are others that are uh, kind of on a pulley system. There's ones that take up no floor space at all. So if you have a really small space, those are the ones I recommend. But of course, that's if you can make it permanent. What happens if you're shooting in the like literally just setting up in your hallway and you got to take it down after. My recommendation would be perhaps auto poles. You can get some auto poles where it doesn't take up floor space. So you don't have to worry about the feet. And what they are is they're basically tension rods. So it's one pole. And then when I pull the tension, part of it hits the ceiling, part of it hits the ground. And then the background hangs between that. So that could be a solution. But guess what? If you're not worried about being fancy, I mean, you can tape a background to the wall or to the ceiling. It's just that's perhaps not the, the most stable of things. So it's okay in small spaces to DIY. And in the gear guide, I have some suggestions for the actual commercial solutions, the things that have been made for shooting in backgrounds in small spaces. Here, I actually did something totally different. So from the background to the furthest I can step back is nine feet, but I had a little like cove in a doorway that was extended a little bit further. And so what we did is we set up a C stand. So just one big strong metal stand. And then one of the C stand extension arms. So a basic arm. And then on top of it, a super clamp. And if you check out the section on grip, I talk about all of these different pieces. And so what that super clamp did is just it's in the middle. It's just kind of holding and balancing that background. And so this is a smaller background. As you can see, um, it's not even six feet wide. And so it's perfect for this space. And so it gives me that, that perfect size. And you can actually have backgrounds made by several companies that they're custom made, hand painted exactly to the size you need. So if you have a space that is eight feet tall and five feet wide, you can have an eight by five background made just for you. When you're shooting in a smaller space, uh, shooting a headshot or three quarter shot isn't too much of a problem. So we're going to start there and just talk about some of those considerations. And then we'll move along to full length shots where you'll find it a little bit more challenging. All right, so let's talk about modifiers and the lights that you choose in a small space. If you're shooting in a small space, when you look to purchase modifiers, don't get anything with a lot of depth. For example, my Profoto three by four foot softbox, I think it's about this deep. Uh, for me, that's like a, a third of the entire width of the space here. And so it's regularly going to get in my shot. And then if I put that on a D1, a D1 is about this big. So I'm taking up half of my shooting space. It doesn't mean it can't be done, but a lot of times people think that uh, speed lights are, are not great studio lights. And, and I've given you some of the reasons you might choose strobe over speed lights, but guess what? Speed lights are fantastic for small spaces. One of the reasons is, is they're, I mean, they're super small and really low profile, so they won't take up much space, but also, in a small space, you have all of the power output you need. Think of it this way. Um, some of these studio strobes, 
uh, they have a ton of output, maybe a thousand watts. And what will happen is in this small space, no matter how far I put this strobe back, like if I moved one really far away, it's still pretty close. I mean, I can only get it maybe three, four, five feet away at most. So that thousand watt second, so much of that light's still going to be hitting her even when it's a low power. I might not be able to open up to a wide aperture if I want. Like it's, it's going to be too much to handle. So actually the speed light with its low output is completely fine. Now there's also certain studio strobes that are actually made that are lower profile. For example, this DigiB. I mean, this, this is a studio strobe, but it's much smaller, it's much more compact. So in other words, yeah, I mean, I, I shoot with my Profoto strobes all the time. I could absolutely do it in this small space, but a lot of the smaller, less expensive speed lights or studio strobes will work perfectly for this. So just know whatever particular studio strobes or speed lights you have, they work just fine in, in a small space. But then we're talking about modifiers. I said, you can't get anything deep. Well, something like a flatter umbrella or a smaller softbox is probably a good way to go. And so I can actually back this up even further if I need a little bit more space to shoot. But what's nice about this is, you know, in a small space, you have no choice most of the time, but to have your light pretty darn close to your subject. But we already know that the larger the light source is compared to the size of the subject, the softer the light. So basically when you take a modifier, bring it in real close, it's going to be soft. So I don't need to have a huge modifier, like a big umbrella or a big soft box in order to get soft light. I've got something that's medium sized, but it has to be close because I'm in a small space, which means it will be soft. So I'm going to get nice, soft, beautiful portrait light. All right. So for your checklist so far, uh, make sure you have a stand that doesn't take up too much space. Just a regular stand. The one I have here, I have it so the legs aren't out too far obstructing my movement or obstructing my shot. Uh, I want to have uh, modifiers that aren't too big, modifiers that aren't too deep. And then I need to consider where I'm going to be putting my subject in relationship to the background. All right. So right now, I know that if I move my subject really close to the background, it gives me more space to shoot, which is fantastic. But you're going to see I run into a problem. So Jen, can you do me a favor? Can you back up right up to the background? Okay. So this isn't going to be bad by any means, but what you'll notice is when she is close to the background, it's going to cast a shadow on the background. All right. So let me make sure this is on. Perfect. Great. Now, when she's right up against the background, you can see on the left hand side of her, uh, there's a shadow cast on the background. Here's the thing, because I'm using a shoot through umbrella, which gives me really soft light. When you use a softer light source, you will not see as much of a defined shadow. A soft light source creates soft shadows. If I used just my bare studio strobe, like, or, or my bare speed light, nothing on it. It gives me hard light, which creates hard shadows. So that shadow that it's creating would be super distracting. So as I'm looking at it here, I mean, it's not bad. But watch what happens if I just move her out. Can you come out like uh, two feet? Yeah. So, okay. She, now two feet in a small space is a lot. If all I have is nine. Okay. But I'm going to back up to my nine foot here. Okay. Same exact thing. And so the shadow is a little bit in the lower left, but as I moved her away, it's a lot less noticeable. It's a lot less defined and it's, it's really beautiful, soft light. And also, as I moved her forward, she got closer to the shoot through umbrella. And that did two things. The first thing it did is as she moves closer to that light, the closer she is, the larger it is compared to her. So the softer it is. So the light on it is really beautiful. It's really soft because she's so close. The other thing it did is played with the inverse square law. So go back and watch that video if you need the, the refresher, but because she moved closer, the light falls off, which means not quite as much of it hits the background. So the background gets a little bit darker and I think it actually creates really nice separation. And so I'm shooting in this small space and I think this is beautiful, soft portrait light. Now, if I want to make sure if I'm using a speed light that the light is shaping the face the way that I want, I can just take a shot like I did there, or you can hit the depth of field preview button, which I've also demoed in the section about speed lights which will give me a quick flash pulse of that speed light so I can make sure that it's sculpting the face the way I want. 
Right now, I am purposely shooting at 4.0. And the reason I'm doing so is that narrower depth of field is going to make that background a little softer. So it's going to give it a little bit more of a painterly look. Um, and also, it, it, when I'm shooting with speed lights, I have less output. So opening up my aperture actually compensates for that. All right, so let's talk about another consideration, my lens choice. So for those last two shots, I was between like somewhere around 55, 60 millimeters uh, for my focal length. Um, I'm not saying this because you should go shoot 55 or 60 millimeters. That's not, that's not why I mean it is I'm using a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. I'm using a zoom lens. Most of the time, if you're in a small space, zoom lenses are, are usually the way to go because if I've got an 85 millimeter lens and I want to get a wider shot, I got to keep backing up. And then I, I'm, I'm at as far back as I can go. I'm at my nine feet. So it's probably not as practical. Being able to zoom is going to allow me to change my composition a little bit better and work in small spaces. The same thing is true though, is if you go for a longer zoom lens, let's say I take my 70 to 200, how those lenses work is they have a minimum focus distance, which means to focus on her, there's a minimum distance away that I have to be. And so I might actually get stuck and not be able to focus on her in the small space I'm in. For me, I think that a 24 to 105 or a 24 to 70 are gonna be really great lenses in tight spaces. You know, for the 24 to 105, I can get 105 for a tight shot, but I can also get wider if I need to have lengths a little closer to full length. Uh, you can use fixed focal length lenses, but I wouldn't go for a long one. I wouldn't go for 85. I think you're probably better off somewhere around a 50, but you'll probably find it easier if you have a zoom lens. One of the reasons I like this 24 to 105 is I actually, we look up the specs and I can focus anywhere further than 1.5 feet from her. So a foot and a half, meaning I can actually focus on her for a portrait, like right on her. Now, do I think that's a, the way to go? Uh, probably not, but I could actually focus close in this. I can, I can fill the frame with her face if I were, had no space at all. Now, generally for many portraits, backing up a little bit and zooming in is going to be preferred. But here I can either shoot, I mean, I could shoot 24 and fit her in totally, or I could shoot, this is a really nice portrait compression. Keep your hands soft on your waist there, good on your thigh, perfect. So I get a nice shot here at 50 millimeters and another shot here at about 90. And I didn't, I didn't have to move, I was able to work in this space. But if for whatever reason, I didn't have nine feet, I had six, I would still be able to focus, still be able to get my shot. Controlling light in your space. Okay, so as I'm taking these shots of Jen, I think that it's really beautiful, soft light, and it's got a little bit of mood to it, but the shadows don't get too dark. So let me, let me take a, a shot, hand soft on your thighs again. Beautiful. Okay, nice. So what I like about this is because it's a shoot through umbrella, it's really, really soft. And then I'm looking on the shadow side of her face and they're still sculpting, totally. Like I still see the shadows on her nose and the side of her face, but if you look, those shadows are filled in. They're filled in a lot. These are not dark shadows at all, but the light is over here on this side, so there should be shadows. And the reason why is this is a big, giant white reflector. It's a giant white reflector, the same as in a bigger studio that I might have a white V flat. It's a big white reflective surface. So what happens is in this case, I picked a modifier without that much control. When you shoot with a shoot through umbrella, it just throws light everywhere. It's really soft, but what's happening is the light is kicking on the walls, the ceiling, and over to that wall filling in the shadows. So here's what it comes down to. Do you care? Like, does it actually affect your shot? In this case, it is affecting my shot, but I like it, so I'm gonna leave it. There's no reason to change it, it's not wrong, but you have to know that you can take control of this if you need to. So for example, if I decided, no, I want those shadows to be darker, or I'm doing a dramatic shot where that side of the face should be in complete shadow, then I'll have to do something. And so I could do something as simple as taking a black piece of board. Um, I actually cut holes into this for a different project, but it will work just fine. Uh, taking a black piece of board and I could set it on something next to her. I could tape it to the wall. Um, I could put it on a stand or it is completely fine to take a piece of black fabric and gaff tape it to the wall. I mean, as long as you don't mess up your walls, but gaff tape is, it's not supposed to be sticky, so it actually works. Um, 
that's completely fine. If you don't care what it looks like and you just care about the results, then do whatever works. So in this shot, I'm not gonna change it. But in some other shots, when I want a little bit more drama, I may need to hang up that black piece of fabric. So far, it's pretty easy to shoot a headshot or a three quarter shot as, as far as having enough space and being able to fit your lights in the small space. Um, now, if I want to have the light flatter, you know, I have to kind of balance between getting it in my shot and distance and all that, but full length is when it actually becomes kind of an issue. Um, and so let's take a look at why it's an issue and then some problem solving that you have to work with. All right, so first of all, could you stand up for me? Uh, let's get a full length shot of her standing. All right, so I'm gonna back up all the way to my nine foot mark here. And one of the things I already see is at this distance, when she stands up, I need to raise my light. And so I'm gonna raise my light. And again, I'm running into the like seven and a half foot ceiling over here on the right hand side. Uh, but the reason is, is I can't have the center of the light, A, pointed at her chest, because that will be the brightest thing, but also lower than eye level, because then it, there's no sculpting. It's, it's going to flatten out her features. I do want it to be eye level or a little bit higher, so I can try to raise it up a bit, as much as I can in this small space. All right, so let's see how this looks with it raised up a little bit and uh, step towards me just a little. So when I try to shoot this full length, okay. Okay, so the light on the face is decent. I actually, that when she comes closer, like that is a decent angle of light. The center is pointed at the center of her face. So direction looks good. <laughs> Problem is, in order to fit her head to toe in this shot, I am all the way up my 24 millimeters. And this shot is super duper distorted, first of all. Um, I mean, she looks, you still look great. <laughs> like, you look really good. But regardless of that, the problem I'm running into is she's not even close to on my background. Like, her head is running off the top of the background. She doesn't fit. Um, and so this is a problem of perspective. Longer focal lengths compress distances. They make things look closer together. And they put them more into relative sizes. But when I use a wide angle, it makes whatever's closest to my camera look largest. So in this case, because I'm shooting a wide angle, she's much closer to me. So she's gonna look much bigger and much taller than that background and she's not going to fit. So one of the things I could do is use a longer focal length. But here in my space, at 24, that's the only way I could fit her head to toe. So if I could, back up, back up to 12 feet, 15 feet, and use a longer focal length, not 24, something more like 70 or something like that, then she actually might fit in the frame of that background and not be cutting off at the top. So if I could do that, great, but I've got nine feet. That's all I've got to work with for depth. So what else can I do? Well, one way to help me out would actually be to put her right up against the background. Like it, it's just helping me because now when I take the same exact shot, I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna take the same exact shot at 24 millimeters. I I'm, I'm, didn't change anything. I still see the same frame, but now she fully fits on that background. Now, of course, that frame isn't so great. Uh, so I'm gonna recompose. Let me get another shot. Okay. And also if I wanted a lower angle, now it's not a problem. She's not gonna be hanging off the top of the background. All right, so a couple things happened here though. One of the things that happened is when she backed up, you will now see that there is a shadow cast to the left-hand side of her. The closer you can get her, the better it'll be in this case, just because it'll make the shadow smaller. If she steps off, can you take a half a foot? Like right there. You're gonna see a little bit more of that shadow. I mean, it kind of depends on if it bothers you. You'll definitely want to use a soft light source. That soft light source makes less definition to the edges of the shadow, makes it less noticeable. And also, since I moved her more towards that background, she moved away from the light source. And so now the light, it, it does hit head to toe, but it's also not as soft. So I'm gonna have you right up against that background for me again. I'm gonna move this in just a bit. Oh, I'm hitting my ceiling. Okay, try right there. So I do see a shadow, but it's soft, not super defined. And taking a look at this, it doesn't ruin the shot. It kind of just depends on if you, if it, you know, distracts you. Now, one way I could get rid of this more 
would be actually moving my light around to the front. Because what's happening is the light's coming from the right hand side, but as it comes from the right hand side, it's casting a shadow on the left. If I move the light around to the front, it casts the shadow directly behind her. So you'll see it, but it'll be less noticeable. So I'm gonna move that light, but what I have to consider is when does it get in my shot? When does it get in my frame? So let me move that over. So I can just a little bit. Try here. Now, if you take a look at it, this is very much in my photo. But if I choose the right focal length, it won't be. So for example, if I step back here and I use a longer lens, it's in my shot. Because this longer lens compresses the distance between them. And so what happens is in the top right hand corner, I couldn't get rid of this umbrella. I mean, if for whatever reason you needed to be there, you could Photoshop it out. But I can also get up a little closer, use a slightly wider angle lens, and so what the wider angle lens is, is it's allowing me to get the entire shot in, move in closer, and I'm not getting anything of this umbrella in the frame anymore. So I like it. I'm looking at it. There is a barely visible shadow uh, behind her. It's really soft light and I can fit her in head to toe. So let me get one more of those. And I got her head to toe without getting the umbrella in and she fits perfectly on the background. And as I said, that's a really narrow background. So basically, here's some of the things you're thinking about. If you're in a small space and need to shoot full length, if the person is too far away from the background and you can't back up and use a longer lens, you are stuck. You do need to bring them closer to that background in order for them to fit. Uh, but in that case, then you have to pay attention to the position of your light. Because when they're really close to the background, if it's a hard light source, you're gonna see that shadow on the background. For the softer light source, it's less noticeable, but the further off to the side it is, the bigger that shadow will be. So I can bring the light around front so it's a little bit flatter and I notice that shadow less, but in that case, is it in your shot? These are all of the things you're balancing. If you want to see more shadow to your frame, you can bring that umbrella off to the side or whatever your light source is off to the side, but then either be okay with the shadow or bring in a white reflector or a fill card to fill it in. So I like this. I'm gonna grab a couple three quarter length shots. Uh, not because I can't get the full length, but I, I personally think the interest is kind of in the upper part of the frame. So, all right, let me get a couple of shots here. Perfect. Roll that left uh, right arm back just a little bit. Good, bring it forward just a little bit more. Yeah, great. Perfect, lean your chest forward just a bit. Good. Chin down a little. Perfect. Great. Okay, now I wanna make just a little side note about controlling your light. Um, in this shot, because I've moved the umbrella forward into the center, it's, it's, it is pretty flat light. And if you look, the light on the background is pretty even from left to right. If I wanted the light on the background to be darker in a bigger space, um, I might bring some flags in. And I could do that here. I could bring in a flag to cast a shadow on the background, but I'm just gonna be honest, I, I wouldn't do that for this space. I would just darken it down in post. It's fine, I'd add a little vignette on the edges and what it'll do is it'll just tone down the corners and bring your eye back to the center of the frame, which is the center of interest of our subject. When I have my subject up against the background with a soft light source, it allows me to get a shot that's full length with a really subtle shadow. It looks beautiful, but when they're right up against the background, you can't really add in additional lights. I mean, you, you can add fill lights, but I'm talking about can't add a background light. I can't add a rim light on the hair. So that is a, a downside of this. And so if I wanted to try to meet in the middle or if I wanted to be able to get some space, like, can you come forward two feet? Like even that, those two feet, now I would be able to pop a light on the background or pop a hair light on her. I don't need a ton of space to be able to do this. But even now getting a full length shot it's going to be a little bit difficult because I got to go wide angle enough to fit her in, but that wide angle puts the umbrella in. So then I have to move that off to the side. So I, I, I think I can do that. And let's see if I back up. And I probably have to Photoshop in the edges of the background. So it's, it's doable. These are just all the things I'm kind of considering in my head, unless, 
I could back up, use a longer focal length, zoom in, it would compress around the background and then no more Photoshop on the edges. So yes, if you've had this problem, it's not just you. It's definitely a problem lots of people run into. But I'm gonna move her forward and uh, I wanna try a couple of things with modifying my light in this small space. So I've got that shoot through umbrella, which shoot through umbrellas, I mean, they like just throw light everywhere. The light is kicking towards her. It's kicking towards the wall. It's bouncing off the wall behind the ceiling, everything. And so let's say that I angle it straight across at the wall, directly across. It's a white wall. And so when I do this, what's gonna happen is I'll get bounce here, a lot of bounce here. And then part of the shoot through umbrella, some of the light is still going to kick towards her. So I already know in this case, the light is going to be super, 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 super flat and without shadows. So let me take a look here. Great. So it is, I mean, it's just beautifully soft, tons of fill. And the key is that I understand my space. Like I know that I can purposefully bounce even more light, bounce it off of everything, still get a little kick. And it's not wrong because I did it on purpose. It was supposed to be like that. Um, but let's say in doing this, I actually pulled her away from the background and maybe I want the background to go darker. I don't want as much light to hit the background. So what you would normally do is maybe you would put a flag in the way or you'd feather. So feathering, turning the light away, but guess what? I already did that and it, it, didn't, it didn't change anything because it's a shoot through umbrella. So this is an instance when I'd need to know for the type of control of light that I need, a shoot through won't work, especially in this small space. So this would be an instance where I'd need an Octobox maybe, or I would need a bounce umbrella, maybe with diffusion. And so what I can actually do is for this same umbrella, I've got this fabric that I can attach to it so I can make it a bounce umbrella. And so I can make it a silver bounce umbrella. And if I don't want that specularity, I can add a diffusion piece to it and make it into a bounce umbrella with diffusion. Uh, but what I'm actually gonna do is I want even more control of the light. I don't want it to spread out as much. So I'm just gonna switch to an umbrella I already have with the diffusion on it. So let me give that a quick switch. So I switched over to a small white umbrella with diffusion. And so the diffusion is going to make it soft, but because it's small, it's not that soft. But because we're in a small space, I have to bring it in close. So it's going to be relatively soft. So uh, right now with this umbrella, I have it pointed at my subject and I have it pointed at the background, which means it'll hit my subject and some of that light will also hit the background. Uh, before I show you what that looks like, you'll also notice that the rod of the umbrella sticks out quite a bit and it actually starts to get into my shot. If you are shooting in a small space, they actually make umbrellas where the rods are shorter or they fold. And so if this is something that you need in a small space, look for umbrellas that do that. It actually makes the profile of it much more compact. All right, so I'm bringing this in nice and close, pointed at the background and at my subject. So let's take a look at the light. So I used to think that a small umbrella with diffusion was going to be crappy light. I don't know. I always used to think umbrellas just weren't good light because that's what I started off with. And when I started off with umbrellas, I used them incorrectly. I basically took one umbrella silver on one side far away, one umbrella silver on the other side from far away, which gives you specular but flat light and it's just not pretty. Let's take a look at this shot again. It is so pretty. It is so soft because I have it in really, really close to my subject. So you can absolutely make a single small umbrella in a small space look beautiful. And the light that's hitting the background, it actually works in this case because it gives her some separation. But let's say that I don't want that light on the background. That's why we switched over. Instead of having the shoot through, I know switched over to this umbrella because I can feather it more, I can change the angle. So now if I change the angle, so the light's still going to hit her face, but it won't be on the background quite as much. And something else that would help me is if I don't need to shoot full length, I can pull her away from the background more if I needed to. So even less light will hit the background, but I don't have that space to work with. So we're gonna leave her here for now. Okay, so now the background got a little darker, particularly in the edges. 
So in the top right hand corner, the background gets a little bit darker. I can move it in a little bit more and feather it off a tiny bit more. And yeah, the background certainly got darker, particularly in the top right hand side and behind her shoulder here. But if you look, the shadows on the left hand side of her face have quite a bit of fill and the background still looks relatively light. Part of the reason for that is this umbrella is still bouncing off this wall and this is still bouncing on the background and on the side of her face. So if I really wanted more drama, what I would need to do is do something to block off the light on that side of the frame. So I just wanna show you the difference. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape up some black fabric. We're going to use negative fill, or in other words, same idea as having a black V flat, just making sure that I have more control over the spill of light. All right, so to control the light bouncing around the room, we've actually hung up our black fabric just using gaffer's tape, super DIY, nothing fancy, but it's gonna kill the spill of light. And so if I have this angled the same way as the shoot through umbrella was pointed right across at that other wall, there's still gonna be some light that hits our subject, but shot's gonna look very different. Perfect. So now you can see that background is much darker because you don't have that fill. And also the shadows on that side of her face are darker as well. Now there's enough light in white walls in the room that there's probably some spill, but we've gotten a lot more control than the previous shot. So now this would be a good instance when I've darkened down the background that maybe I can move her away even more if I want it even darker. And then I could add the hair light or the background light. And so I can start layering things in and I have the control that I generally would consider I would only have in a big space, but I totally have it just by paying attention to the light in my small space. All right, so let me pull you up just one more foot. Good, great, perfect. Okay, so that looks beautiful. Um, there is still in fact a little bit of a shadow on the background on the left-hand side of the frame. The further away I move her or choosing a larger light source, even softer, would make that shadow less noticeable. But now what I wanna do is I wanna add that additional light source. So now I wanna come in and add the background light or the hair light. And it, it gives me a little more control, a little bit more depth, but one light looks just fine for me. So let's add that second light. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna add a gridded light to the background. These are all speed light modifiers. This particular one is just a small umbrella with diffusion. It's nothing special. It's not specifically for speed lights, but this grid is for speed lights. In a strip soft box, I have ones just for speed lights. Every single thing I'm talking about, you could also do with an inexpensive studio strobe or a professional high-end studio strobe. Okay. So the idea behind this second light is that since I now have feathered the light off of the background, it goes really dark and I could add this second light, which is a grid, kind of that focus beam. I could maybe place it behind her body or behind her head and that creates a little bit of a glow. It is a stylized look. Uh, it's not necessary, but now that we've moved her away from the background and feathered our light and added uh, that negative fill, now I can actually add a background light for separation. So let's see, a little bit this way, just a little, good. Good, and look your head to the light. Nice. Pretty, one more. And then eyes, just your eyes at me. Perfect. So this light is beautifully soft. It's really far off to the side, so if she looks straight on, her, light, her face goes to split light. So I kind of turned her head into the light so she could capture that soft light. But because it's so small, it doesn't light much of her body, and we feathered it, so it doesn't light much of the background. And we have the negative fill, so it doesn't fill in the shadows. Everything else goes dark, so that grid, now when you see it behind her, that's why I see her waist. It gives her that separation. Without it, it just goes to solid black. There really isn't much shape to her beautiful form. That second light is a huge help. If you compare this shot to some of the shots before, where we had the shoot through umbrella, it's a totally different look, but they're both equally valid. The whole point is, is with just a couple of changes in angle and the environment and the modifier, the shot is completely transformed. So it's more about knowing how to use your tools, not about the size of the space I'm in. Shooting in a small space is not necessarily easy. 
but if you know the tools you need to problem solve, you can make beautiful images. And so when you're thinking about shooting in a small space, you have to figure out, okay, what can I do to have smaller modifiers and uh, have something that's lower profile? Okay, what about my focal length? What can I do to get the right focal length and the right distance from the background so I can still fit the subject on the background, but not cast hard shadows in the background? And so you're balancing all of these things. If you want a full length shot, you probably have to back her up. But if you back her up, you may see that shadow. But if you use a softer modifier, you'll be less likely to see that shadow. Moving it around front reduces it as well. But if you want a little space between your subject and the background, because you do want to use additional lights, you need to pull them away from that. But then when you are modifying your light, maybe feathering it so it doesn't hit the background, for example, well, you got to keep in mind that everything in the room is going to affect what the light looks like. So the walls, the ceiling, the angle of the light, they all play together. So in short, I mean, everything we talked about, you just have to realize that every move you make, every decision affects the final look of the picture. So if you know these things, then you'll be able to problem solve shooting in small spaces. In our very small but lovely Speedlight Studio, uh, I'm going to take a couple headshots of Ashlyn. I just want to show you some varieties of what I can do with one light just by moving it around and paying attention to my environment. So we're starting off with the shoot-through umbrella. The shoot-through umbrella, very, very close, is going to give me very soft light. But also, because I have the white wall on the left-hand side of the frame, it's basically like having a white reflector just out of frame. So I know it's going to fill in the shadows and give me really nice, even light in the scene. Uh, I should, should still have sculpting, like there should still be some shadow, but it's not going to be heavy. And for the first headshot I'm going to do for her, I want it to be a little brighter, a little bit more inviting. So with one light, I can do that as long as I pay attention to the direction of light and the shadows. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and hit that little button, the little uh, depth of field preview button just to see how the light's sculpting on her face. So I like it. it gives me a little bit of a preview. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is sit up real straight. Perfect. Now lean towards me. Great. And I'm going to have you just give me a soft smile first. It's perfect. Great. Okay. So um, what I'm seeing is even though there's a ton of bounce light and it's filling in the shadows, I think I want a little more light on that side of the face. So I'm actually going to bring the umbrella forward a little bit allowing it to wrap around. Right now it's a little too far to the side. So let me just bring it this way. I moved it forward a couple of inches. That's it. Now I just want to note as well the distance between my subject and the background. I have put some distance between her and the background because then I can shoot at 4.0. 4.0 blurs out the background but also the further the subject is from the background the more out of focus it will be and then also the longer focal length I use the more out of focus it'll be. So I just want it to be nice and soft. All right, so that looks good. Let me test this. That's better. I get a little bit more light on the left-hand side of her face. And specifically what I'm looking at is in the first shots, um, there really weren't bright catch lights in her eyes because the light was a little bit too far around to the side. So bringing it forward now, she's got a nice sparkle. It's a little bit more of a glow. And the background, it's got some light because I'm using a shoot-through umbrella and the light's bouncing around but I don't find it distracting. So I actually think that's super cute. I'm going to shoot a couple of more of those and I'm going to try some different expressions and uh, changing the angle of her face. So uh, let's try right there first. Good. Good. It's perfect. And now keeping your head there, give me just a little smile and eyes at me. Wait, waiting. Recycle time again. Those are super cute though. One of the things you may have noticed is that as I was taking pictures, there was once or twice where I, I took the picture, like I clicked, but the light didn't flash. And the reason is, is that when you think of light like buckets of water, basically when I took the first picture, I emptied the entire bucket of water and then it's got a refill. But by the time I clicked again, the bucket wasn't filled up enough to, to actually pour water on her or the analogy is lighting, right? Um, so this is one of the downsides sometimes of working with speed lights or working with inexpensive studio strobes if the recycle times are slower. But guess what? It's not that big of a deal, especially in a small space like this, because I don't need that much light. So what I'm going to do is right now I'm shooting at ISO 100. And so what that means is I, at 4.0, I need uh, a lot more water to get the right exposure. But if I pump up to maybe ISO 800, 
What it did is it made my camera's sensor more sensitive to light. So basically to get the same exposure, I don't need as much water, which means I don't have to take as long to refill it. So it gives me faster recycle times. Uh, right now I'm not shooting on manual, I'm shooting on ATTL. I'm, I'm letting the, the camera help me out, letting the speed light help me out and getting the right exposure. My point is this, everything I'm showing you here, it doesn't matter if I'm shooting with a speed light, a studio strobe, an inexpensive studio strobe, you just have to know the limitations of your gear and how to work around it. So now, bumping up to ISO 800, it's not gonna be an issue anymore. I am totally confident that ISO 800 is a clean enough file, there's not going to be a lot of noise, but I'm still gonna be able to get the look and feel that I want with faster recycle times. So this is perfect. Okay, so this is gonna be a headshot that would be great for her if it's for um, a job or an update to a profile picture or something like that. But let's say we wanted to do something a little artistic, a little bit um, moodier or more dramatic. All right, so I've switched over to the Rapid Box, and this one's actually called the Rapid Box Duo. Uh, the reason being is you can put two speed lights in it, which gives you more power output, and it's bigger. Um, there's another Rapid Box that's smaller, which if you're in a really small space and you're not comfortable working with a modifier this big, go for the smaller one, uh, because it's going to be a little bit more compact, and it's great for headshots. Uh, this is the modifier, however, I'd recommend if you were going more for full length shots. It just gives you a little bit more spread. And again, because it's bigger, it gives you even softer light. So now that I've changed this over and it's not a shoot through umbrella, I'm going to have more control over the spill of light. So if you look at where the light's pointed, it's pointed this direction. So I'm not going to get hardly any light in the background. I already know that. Um, and I will get some fill to the shadows, but because I know how the inverse square law works, if you look at how close this light is, I'm not going to get that much fill. A uh, couple other things is I never thought that you would want to shoot with a light this close. I mean, it is so close to her and it's a pain, right? Like it, it, you can't shoot that wide, but I'm just shooting a, sh a headshot here. That was my whole purpose. And so it being that close actually just gives me really soft light. So it's actually totally fine. You just have to be careful of your frame. So let's take another shot now and look your chin a little further right there. Great. All right, so in this shot, the light is super soft. It's a lot more dramatic. There's a lot more shadows and the background is darker. But you will notice I still have fill to those shadows. I want it. I don't, I don't want the, the shadows to fall to complete darkness in this shot. Uh, but, and so actually the wall is working in my benefit. But it's, it's definitely more dramatic. But I wanted to show you one more thing. When I'm on this side of her face, I see more of the lit side of the face. And this is the shadow side. So let me just take a quick shot and show you this. Okay. Okay. So I see more light. But if I come around to this side, I'm seeing more and more of the shadow side of her face. And so the highlight, the light side of her face is smaller. It's less visible. So now, same thing. I'm going to look that way. I didn't change my light at all, but the shot gets much more dramatic because I'm seeing less of the lit side of the face. So even just me changing my angle changes what the light looks like. So the reason I'm saying this is if you're in a small studio space and you can't move that light, like maybe you, you can't move it back to the side more, can you move you? Like maybe you can rotate the subject and rotate you and that actually changes the direction of light. So kind of keep those things in mind. I can turn her more to the light to catch more of it or I can turn her away from it to catch less of it because sometimes you might not even be able to move your light. So you, your subject and the light, they can all move to help you create the shape of the light you want. So for my very last shot of her, we're going away from headshot. This, the first one was kind of a clean, uh, welcoming headshot. This one is meant to be more of a dramatic portrait, uh, still soft, but let's say I wanna go even, even more dramatic. So I'm gonna switch my modifiers and switch the position of the light for one more super dramatic shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a strip softbox. And so I have a strip softbox made specifically for speed lights. And so the strip softbox is going to be smaller profile than this. Because if I want to just, what I, what I really want to do for this portrait is I just want to photograph a rim light on her profile. But if I want to move this back further to get that rim light, or I want to change my angle, I don't have enough space. I mean, I can kind of get there, but it would be easier for me to do it with a smaller modifier. So that's when I'm going to switch over to that strip. It's going to give me a narrower area of light and it's easier to move around the space. 
So I'm gonna switch over to that and get something really dramatic. So I've set up a strip softbox behind my subject at an angle that'll create short light. And it's going to create basically split light on your face. So it'll be lit on one side, dark on the other. But because of my camera angle, I'm only going to see just the edges. So it's going to give me a beautiful rim light. It's just gonna light her profile. Uh, now, one note that I wanna make is when you're using speed lights in a small space, if you mess up your camera settings, it becomes no more noticeable. And so if you go back to the beginning when we're talking about exposure, let's say I accidentally had my shutter speed really, really slow. If I've got a lot of light in this room, and I'm trying to shoot a dark photo, I will definitely see light in the shadows. So let me just show you. Um, I'm gonna shoot an ISO 200, one 200th of a second F4. Let's get this really dramatic profile shot. Beautiful. And I wanna get a little bit of, like maybe a little bit of Rembrandt light, a little bit of light in her, her the shadow side of her face. So turn your chin this way just a little bit more. And it's really hard to see, so I'm gonna use this button to head a little bit more to your left. Good, let me test this. Okay, good. Okay, so can you turn your shoulders further left? Keep going, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's perfect. So now what I'm gonna get is I'll get that, that profile, but just a kiss of light so that the eye closest to camera has a catch light. I think that looks better if I'm going for a portrait. So I like it. Let's shoot that. Super dramatic. The shadows are pretty sh sharp. Can you lean your chest forward? Chin out, down a little bit, and then pull the hair on the backside. I just want it to be a nice clean frame. Beautiful. Great. Okay, so I like that shot. Um, but just watch what happens. I'm gonna take one frame at this, these camera settings, the one we're currently at. And now, why don't I change my shutter speed? I'm gonna go from one 200th of a second to say a 50th, okay? Uh, you might've accidentally said it like that. Watch what happens. When you switch between those two, the shadows get filled in. And so you start to see some of that ambient light. And honestly, the light in this room is not even that bright. So just be aware if you're using speed lights in a small space and you've got windows right next to your subject, you're gonna be fighting that for sure, especially since they're so close to your subject, you're fighting it even more. So that's when you need the curtains or hanging something out else to block it. Or if you've got really bright overhead lights, those overhead lights are gonna bounce everywhere and fill in your shadows. So you wanna do something about it or make sure that you're using camera settings that are not going to actually record that ambient light. Good way to check. Turn off your strobe, turn off your speed light, take a shot at your camera settings and see if you see any ambient light recording. That's the way you can tell if it's messing up your shot. So let me take one more of those frames and I'm shooting it back at one 200th of a second. Beautiful, can you pull the hair back on that side one more time? Beautiful. And you'll see that I'm just barely catching a little bit of light in her eye, the eye closest to camera. It was really hard to do that because I don't have the modeling light to work with. So. Can I do it with speed lights? Totally, but it would be easier if I had a modeling light to work with. So you can see with just using one speed light, I can get a really, really welcoming, beautiful, uh, kind of brightly lit headshot using a shoot through umbrella. But then I can make the shot even more dramatic if I do short light with an Octabox. And then I can go for something a little more artistic, more of a rim lit profile shot if I take a strip softbox behind. So just paying attention to where light is bouncing and then also the angle of the light and the modifier I'm using in a small space with one light, I can do a lot to create a variety of different moods for headshots. All right, my lovely Jen looks gorgeous. I love her hair. And so we're going for a shot that'll be kind of uh, vintage Hollywood, beautiful, uh, but uh, I wanna do this with speed lights in a small space. I wanna keep it really, really simple. And I'm gonna keep it limited just to two speed lights. So you don't need a lot of gear. Uh, and so let me, let me see what the mood is that I want. And I already know that it's going to be black and white. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change on my camera, my picture, picture style or picture control to monochromatic so I can see it in black and white and then I can build from there. Um, so I'm gonna have you stand, kind of just stay right there for a sec and let me see. So, She's a, like a foot and a half, two feet, two feet from that background. And I've got my small umbrella, it's white with diffusion to the front of her. And so what that's doing is it's giving me, it's not really hard or soft light, it's kind of in between. And there's a shadow on the background to the left of her. Um, she's gorgeous, so it doesn't look bad, uh, but it's not exactly what I want. I know I want softer light. So let me bring this umbrella in 
and I'm using TTL on my camera to help me get the right exposure. So I'm not really adjusting any of the settings on my camera. So let's see now. All right, yeah, no, that's much better already. Um, so I brought it in and what it did is it's a little bit further off to the right before because of the angle, it was a little bit flatter. Moving it off to the right gives a little more shadow. It's the left-hand side of her face, a little more sculpting, a little bit more mood, which I love. Uh, and also bringing it in softer, or bringing it in closer makes the shadow on the left-hand side softer. So I like it. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking I want it even more dramatic. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull you out just a little bit. And so that's gonna allow me to make the background darker. And then I'm also going to feather this light. So kick a little light off the background. I'm gonna try something around here. But when I do this, it gives me split light. What I'm getting is I'm getting shadow on this side of her face. It's filled in because of the white wall, uh, but also her hair is casting a little bit of shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with the light in the situation. I'm gonna turn her towards that light. Great. And I'm gonna have you lean out just a bit. Perfect. So my background is now almost completely in shadow because I feathered the light off the background. And now I've got this beautiful short light on her face. The shadow side of the face is towards camera. Uh, it's basically short light. It's kind of between Loop and Rembrandt. I've got that little sliver of light. I like that. But I love the shape and the, the, the big uh, fullness of her hair. And it's blending in with the background. So I'm going to add a grid. So I'm gonna add my second light to separate her out. Just give a little bit of halo. I don't want it to be strong because I don't want it to pay more attention to the background than her face. So I'm gonna have it lower power. So instead of having this, which is at full exposure, right? So it's kind of my my one-to-one -one with my ATTL. I'm gonna have this second light a couple of stops less. So it's just a kiss of light in the background. All right. So, got that grid on and I'm gonna hit the depth of field preview button and it's angled pretty much behind her head if I'm at a low angle, my low camera angle. If I'm at a higher camera angle, I'm standing here, it's not quite where I need it to be, but I plan on shooting about here. So let me, let me give that a test now. Perfect, so it's about two, two and a half st uh, stops less light on this grid. And you can do that again, you could either do it manually by cutting the fraction down, right? Or I could on TTL, I could make it two stops less, which is what I've done. It is so beautiful, dramatic light, good fill to the shadows without them being too filled in because I want this to be dramatic. So I'm gonna shoot it just like that. I love it, it's beautiful. Perfect, lean forward just a little more, great. Great, and put both hands up. Great, now let's just assume that I wanna get one shot a little bit wider. I wanna get a little bit more of her outfit in the frame. So in this case, I'd have to decide because my grid is not covering that big of an area. Do I want it behind her hair or do I want it behind her lower back? And if I do that, if I, if I have to pick, well then maybe the background going completely black isn't gonna work because then I won't see the separation. But I have the light feathered so I can always turn it back towards the background and kick just a little bit more light on the background and that'll give me more separation. So I'm gonna have you stand up. I'm gonna get like a three quarter length shot. And of course I have to raise my light up. Good. And I'm gonna start with it still feathered away. Oh, the hair made you much taller. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's see. So I basically need her to come out a little bit and I'm gonna still do a three quarter length shot but I'm actually gonna do it with her sitting with apple boxes because right now her hair, if I wanna fit that in the frame and at the height she is, I have to back her all the way up against that background. But when I do that, I can't add additional lights. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit her so I can see more of the outfit um, and then I can easily fit her in the frame. All right, let me sit on that for me. That feel okay? Mm -hmm. Great, I'm gonna be lean forward. Perfect, so maybe something like, yeah, we'll try that. Good. All right, so let me lower this back down. Let's test. 
and then maybe one up to the, the chest to make it nice and emotive. Perfect. Okay, so now I've got a little bit more of the dress. I'm backing up to my full length of my nine foot, getting down low. Let's see about this. All right, so I like it. I'm gonna kick a little bit more light on the background. Just give me a little bit more spill by turning that. So again, this way, background will go darker. This way, I'll get more spill. If I pull the light back further, I'll get even more spill on the background. And if I shoot here, it still looks nice, but I like to shoot from lower angles for a little bit more power. So I'm gonna shoot a little lower. It's beautiful. Okay, here we go. Let's see, beautiful. Okay, arch your back real hard when you do that though. And soft eyes at me. Great. I'm going to try one more. Um, let's try one more. I'm going to attempt to get it full length. And what that means is I got to work on this over here, not being in the frame. So I'm going to back it up and let's see if I can shrink this anymore. So I'm going to shrink the stand just barely balancing. Okay. So I'm shrinking the stand. I close the legs up. All right, grid pointed at the background. Should be good, perfect. All right, and so I'll almost have this one in the shot. Should be able to get full length there, no problem. All right, and so I'm shooting with my 24 to 105. And so now if I'm at, let's see, if I'm at 35 millimeters, I can get a full length shot. But the problem that I would run into problem that I do run into is the right hand side of the frame. I can't get a long enough focal length to compress it and actually get the edges of the frame in. So then you got to compromise. I'm going to back you up. And so if I back her up, then I can use uh, V back there, use a little bit of a longer lens. She's going to fit on the entire background, uh, but I'm going to have to really be careful using my grid. So let's see. I think right here should be good. Let me test that. So let me back up again, use my longer lens. And so instead of using 35, I'm going to be more at a 50. And so I barely have the edges of the stands in the bottom of the frame. And that might just be something I'd have to Photoshop. Now, I don't like this as much as the other shot. Um, I don't like this in the background as much anymore because the background's not dark. So I'm actually going to get rid of it. It's not, it's not doing as much before it was dramatic and give me a little halo behind her head, but now it's just a kind of a glowing light on the background. It doesn't quite make sense. So I'm going to back you all the way up to it. Good. Like right up. Can you feel it? Like basically to your back. Perfect. Great. Okay. Let's try this here. Pretty. Okay. So now I'll definitely be able to fit her in the frame, but I'm going to rotate you this way a little bit more. And perfect, and lean forward if you can just a bit. Let's test that. So I definitely have a shadow on the background. If I want less of it, I have to either, can I move you back towards the background more? Like just your butt on that? Yeah. And I can get rid of the shadow a bit, either with a bigger umbrella, a softer light source, or I'm gonna bring it around front to reduce that just a bit. Great, and lean your back towards it. Good, right there. Perfect. So now I have a lot less of that shadow. Uh, hand on your thigh. Good. Perfect. Great. And now turn your shoulders wide to me. Good. A little more aggressive. Pretty. All right. So taking a look at kind of what we got, honestly, the shots that I like best are the most dramatic ones. The ones with the short light to the side, the shadow side of the face towards camera, a little bit of a grid on the background. But this is a different look where I have her evenly lit from head to toe, and I can get a full length shot of her even with that big hair. It's not as dramatic, but it still looks beautiful and timeless. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. I think that's the whole point of light. It's not right or wrong. One shot is super dramatic, lots of shadows, um, a little bit more of a mysterious mood, whereas this is a little bit more confident and uh, it's a little bit flatter light. Different moods, different results, but all done with either one or two speed lights and super basic modifiers.